Is it interesting then for you to want to examine what is what can we say about infinities in in a way that is like logical? You allow yourself to. I mean, you can talk about infinities in many different human pursuits, and in, in the humanities, and poetry, and whatever, in philosophy, definitely. Um, and that definitely intersects with mathematicians talking about infinity, which is okay if we allow ourselves uh, the tools that a mathematician is allowed. That is um, the tools of logic, deductive reasoning then what can we say about infinities? So, I'm going to convince you that there's different sizes of infinity. What do I mean by size? Well, okay, so for example, you want to count apples, okay? Um, uh, and there's three apples. What are you doing when you say that there are three apples? Well, in a way, you're matching numbers, which is like one, two, three, four, five with the number of objects in the set that you're talking about, right? So you've matched one with one of the apples, two with another, and three, and then you conclude that there are three apples. Um, so what do you want, I mean, what are we doing when we say then that two sets of something are the same size? So you have three oranges and three apples. Well, you know, in a way we have this intermediate ground of, uh, of matching the numbers with each set of objects, and then we have this number three, and we say, well, there's a three sameness there. But of course we can actually skip the numbers and just uh, match the objects themselves. So you say one apple matches with the other, and another, and another, and in the end there are no more apples and no more oranges left. And so you have the same size of two sets. All we're doing is creating a map of, uh, a map that is like one to one, and onto, onto is a word that says everything is covered. So now, what about uh, sizes that are infinite? By sizes, I mean like sets that are infinite. So for example, you have a set of numbers, one, two, three, four, five, all the way up to however long it can go. So the set of natural numbers, okay? And I want to say, make the claim that based on the definition that you agreed on previously, then um, the natural numbers are in fact the same size as all the even numbers. You have at least one, two, three, whatever, and it goes on forever. And then you have maybe the set of even numbers, which is, seems in some sense a subset. I mean, it is a subset of that, uh, of that set. You have like two, four, whatever. So it seems, uh, based on how it's structured, it seems like it's half of the size of the, of the natural numbers. But in fact, you can very easily make a mapping that is one-to-one -one and onto between the even numbers and the natural numbers. You can match one with two, two with four, three with six, and so you're matching every natural number with two times it. That matching is precisely satisfies the fact that every number will be matched in those two sets, and the matching is, is unique. So like everything will be matched in pairs. Nothing is repeated, like there's no one number that's matched with two. And so then it satisfies our definition, and it proves use that the set of even numbers and the set of natural numbers are in fact the same size based on that definition. And so now, here's the, the crazy thing. So Cantor, who is, I guess, from about 100 years ago, showed that the size of the real numbers and the size of the natural numbers are, in fact, different. And like the size of the, of the real numbers is so much bigger of an infinity than natural, it's based on this notion of cardinality. And so it's a very, actually, simple argument. It's very beautiful, because something, because it's, it's just really, it, it's proved by contradiction, and it doesn't take that much, you know. Like you'll just have this, like, oh, and this is this is this is it. And so it, it's like it's simple in that way, but it, it proves something that's pretty, you know, pretty uh, surprising. Um, so um, it's called a Cantor's diagonalization argument. And it's based on how it's structured uh, in a in a in a form that is, uh, I guess, pictorially it looks diagonal. So I wanted to kind of write it out. Right. So based on this definition, the only way then to to show that no such map exists is to uh, I mean is to do it by contradiction. You assume that such a map between the real numbers and the natural numbers exists, and then and then you 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 arrive at something that that cannot be true, and then so there, therefore your assumption is wrong. So let's assume that such a map exists. So that means you can order, or rather you can list the natural numbers here, and it goes on forever. These are your naturals, and that's the natural notation for naturals. I can prove that it's a contradiction if I even assume that such a map exists for um, between the natural numbers and a subset of the reals. So in particular, um, 
real numbers that are from 0 to 1. So we assume such a map exists. Um, let's say that it, it's like, you know, A1, A11, A12, A13, whatever. And A, J basically is some natural number. That's all right. So that's, that's kind of the notation for that. And then, uh, and then she also has A21, A22, whatever. So to arrive at the contradiction, we need to produce a number that is clearly between 0 and 1 on the real number line, but is not on this list. And that can be done very simply. So you start with 0, and then you say, OK, look at the first number on this list. Um, it's A1, you know, A11. A11 is some number between uh, 0 and 9, including 0 and 9. So let's, let's let the first digit of this new number not be that. So if, say, A11 was equal to 8, then let's let A11 bar on top equal 3, right? 3 is not equal to 8. The second digit will be chosen such that it is not equal to the second digit of the second number here corresponding to 2. And so it's very easy. So for example, for 3, uh, the third number, you have a third digit, say it was 8, then you want to choose this number, A33 bar, such that it, it's, uh, it's not equal to 8. So very, you know, very simple. There's like an 8 other numbers there that you could choose. You could choose 7, 1, 0, whatever. And you keep on doing this on the diagonal of your list. You keep on doing this, so you produce this like new number such that each uh, each of these numbers are not what it is on this list. And so now the claim is this number, which is clearly a real number between uh, zero and one, is not on my list. Well, why? You can check. It can't be the first number on the list. Why? Because the first digit here was chosen so that it's not this. It can't be the second. It can't equal the second number of the list because the second digit was chosen, constructed specifically so it's not equal to this digit. It can't be the third because likewise it's chosen so that this digit is not equal to this third one. And so it cannot then, based on the same reasoning, because of the diagonal here, it cannot be any of the numbers on this list. And so we arrive at a contradiction because we've been able to produce a real number between 0 and 1 that is not on this list and we assumed that this is a one-to-one -one matching between the natural numbers and all the numbers of the real number line between 0 and 1. The size of the interval 0 1, I mean, it, the, the cardinality of it, the cardinality of the 0 1 is like much bigger than the natural numbers. And this is contained in, in the subset of the real numbers, right? So that's, yeah, that's the proof that say very concrete statements about something that seems a bit more poetic, you know, like, oh, infinities, but then you actually can say something precise about it.